This program is made possible through generous donations from viewers like you. The commandment to go forth and rebuild Jerusalem under Messiah the Prince will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. It is the, uh, in the seventh chapter of Ezra where it says that we came out of Babylon by command of Artaxerxes in the seventh year of the reign of Artaxerxes on the first day of the first month. That would be the month of the Aviv, day one in the seventh year, which is 457 before the Common Era. You go exactly seven sevens and 62 sevens, or a total of 69 sevens, or 483 years later, you come to a V127 of the Common Era, the day Yeshua walked out of the wilderness, and John, Yohanan ben Zachariah said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And this is the time frame that's set between when Yeshua came in as the prophet, Behold the Lamb of God, and then the next marker begins the last seven, and that is the confirmation of the covenant, which is when the Ark of the Covenant is going to be revealed, the testimony that God put in the earth of his son. That is what starts the last seven. One of the things I saw, General Allenby entered into Jerusalem in 1917, December 12th, the 17th. And then one Jubilee series later, 1967, Israel takes Jerusalem. The next Jubilee in that cycle would be 2017. I also saw that May 15th, 1948, you go 70 years into the future as we were 70 years in exile, 70 years in the future, it's 2017. And so I asked the question then, and I've asked it for years after that, has not the Almighty shown us his jubilees? Well, I was shocked to find out that it would be 10 years later asking that question for 10 years. And then finally, in August 2016, exactly 10 years after I launched the Jonah Code, that is when the confirmation comes. And that is what I am here to share with you at this point in time. And so I saw that from 1948, we go to, after 62 sevens, we come to the 63rd Shavuot, the 63rd year, the 63rd Shavuot. This is the earliest possible time, and I am praying for confirmation. Are we on schedule for 2017? Now, what I'm watching for is the confirmation of the covenant. I was looking for how this pattern would then play out. And so now, we see this 2010, the 63rd Shavuot, there is a confirmation, but what is this confirmation? It is simply the confirmation that we are on schedule for 2017. Now, I need to go back, and we, we need to start over from where we were before. In 1917, General Allenby took Jerusalem. Now, you ask, what is the significance of this? If 1917 were a jubilee and the land goes back to its owner, then we go another jubilee into the future. It's 1967 in, in Israel, the Jewish nation takes Jerusalem. This numeration of years is exactly what we we're told to do every year in the numeration of weeks. From when the first fruit offering is given, then you go and count seven Sabbaths. So I'm looking at this in 2017, but I also see that in 1917, General Allenby takes Jerusalem. And so on December 17th, he came into Jerusalem, and by the act of the League of Nations, this is when Israel, um, uh, or Jerusalem, that city, became uh, no man's land at that period of time. But then, exactly from 1917, we go one jubilee into the future, 1967, that is the Six-Day War, and that's when the, the Jewish nation captured the city of Jerusalem. And so then I look at the next Jubilee, that is 2017. Now, we are going back to 1217 in Judah the righteous. Judah was given this prophecy. For eight Jubilees, the Ottoman Turks will rule Jerusalem. 
For one jubilee, Jerusalem will be no man's land. Then, for one jubilee, it will be in the hands of the Jewish nation, which hadn't existed in nearly 2,000, over 1,000 years. The next jubilee will begin the end time messianic age. This is what he wrote in 1217. 300 years after that, 300 years or six jubilees exactly, 1517, the Ottoman Turks come to full power and they take Jerusalem. They take Jerusalem for exactly eight jubilees until 12, until 1917, when on 1217, December 17th, General Allenby takes Jerusalem. By the command of the League of Nations, predecessor to the United Nations, it is officially declared no man's land for one jubilee until 1967, when the Jewish nation, which didn't even exist in 1917 or in 1217 or any time since 68, it, the Jewish nation then took Jerusalem for one jubilee, which brings us to 1217, to bring us to the end time messianic age. Zechariah's thermonuclear war, which has is, which is killed two thirds of the people, and the, and the people of Zion cry out, I've lost all my children. Where are all, all these children coming from? They're coming from the ends of the earth to the land of Israel. This is what is about to transpire, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of this war, which has been prepared, you have voted for it, you wanted change, you're getting changed, sweetheart. Get cleaned up. It is time to get ready because the, the beginning of the Messianic age, the end time Messianic age is upon us. The confirmation of the covenant. Watch this fall. Sundown, September 23rd will be the Day of Trumpets. The upcoming Day of Trumpets will not be the gathering together or rapture, so much anticipated by the dispensational theologians of American Gentile churchianity, but rather the initiation of the intermediate fulfillment of the fall feast of the Lord. Nuclear war will level Damascus and bring the nation of Israel to its knees right where Almighty God wants them before the revealing of the Ark of the Covenant on Yom Kippur. Millions of Israelis will be dead before the smoke clears. Global economic collapse will precipitate the gathering of the lost tribes of Israel from the ends of the earth and bring them into the smoldering ruins of the land of Israel. This will lead up to the Feast of Tabernacles on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem soon to be purged of its gold-domed abomination. On the last great day, the latter rain, the double portion outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the sealing of the 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel will equip the righteous for the final seven-year dash to the finish line and the reward ceremony on the sea of fire and glass. It was a privilege to serve you an honor to serve with you, and it will be an honor to die by your side in the service of the King of Kings, the Prophet, Yeshua HaMashiach. God have mercy on those who love him and who are the called to his kingdom. I will see you on the sea of fire and glass when the smoke clears. Shalom, peace. This program is made possible through generous donations from viewers like you. To pledge your support, please visit A Rude Awakening.